And uh, we'll start this interview by saying your focus is very much on Bristol City, but you're at Leicester on Saturday. What does the game mean to you personally? We've just spoken to Nigel about it as well. We've got Dave and, and Matty returning as well. It must feel, bring back a lot of happy memories this weekend. Yeah, first and foremost, I think I'm sure the gaff would have said as well, it's about us as Bristol City going there and trying to put on as, as good a performance as we can and, and trying to get the win for Bristol City. It's, it's sort of irrelevant when, when the, the game comes to kick off that a couple of the lads, you, we had you know real good spells there, really good spells there. The manager himself was really successful there. Um, but that that's not on our mind. That's put to bed it, when it comes to we want the best for, for Bristol City um, and trying to get the win. We're on a good run of form ourselves. We're playing well. We were ruthless on Tuesday night, which I think we needed to be after the previous home games where we've had the chance of not taking them as, and, and the frustration we've had as players, as, as much as supporters as well. So that was good. We can go there with a spring in our step. But listen, of course, I'd be lying if I say and said it's not going to be sort of an emotional day for for myself. And I'm sure that others also going back to a, to a place where, you know, we've had some, some unbelievable moments. If you can indulge me for a second then and a, a little love letter to Leicester, if you like. what Just talk about your journey. I mean, you won three promotions. Um, you experienced League One with them. You've you experienced the Champions League. I mean, it's it's a journey that not many people would have experienced. Yeah, and listen, I don't want to get caught up in that. But like I say, a, I'm here as a Bristol City player. Um, Leicester City know what they mean to me as a person. They they gave me sort of everything I have in my life. That the owner, some sad moments there as well with with each other's helicopter. So I owe a lot to 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 that man and and his family. Um, but yeah, they they know they know what. That city means to me, you know, my wife's from there, her family will support Leicester, my family will support Bristol City. So it's going to be an interesting game. Um, but like I said, I don't want to get too caught up in, you know, the, the thing which happened there because everyone knows how amazing that story was, you know, from League One to, to Premier League Champions to Champions League to Europa League to everything which we managed to, to accomplish. But that's in the past now. And, and like I keep saying, Bristol City players hoping to maybe sort of emulate some part of that journey ourselves if, if we can. And, and who knows, you know, what, what can happen in the future. Do you almost then have to put it to the back of your mind? On, I mean, I can see you getting off the team coach and everyone cheering you, wanting to shake your hand. I've got this image of you with your headphones on, having to try and be extra focus mode, if you like. Yeah, when I have my headphones, I'm not cool enough for, <laughs> for that. I'm not like the kids these days. Um, yeah, listen, I'm going to enjoy taking it all in for sure. But like I keep saying, it's, it's about us. It's about the performance we can put in and, and how I can help that. You know, hopefully some minutes on the pitch as and when I'm needed and, and, and even just... You know, like usual helping the, the team in preparation and before and after the game and stuff like that. So, like I said, it'll be nice to to go back for sure to see a lot of a lot of old faces and not just playing stuff. I mean, people who work there and, and stuff like that as well. But um, the focus is on us trying to trying to keep this good run going and hopefully climb the table. I think the last time we spoke was after the Watford game, the towards the end of the season. Since then, you've signed a contract. You told me then how important it was for you to be playing first in football. I know the coaching's nice, but you're a player first and foremost. So having signed the contract, you've got some minutes on, on Tuesday. It's quite hard to force your way in at the moment, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the team's playing well. But listen, I said um, with the whole Leicester stuff and on that point, you know, it's I, maybe looking back now, I had an unbelievable sort of career there in terms of trajectory. It was academy all the way through, like we keep saying, Champions League. Um, and then it sort of ends all quite abruptly as it does in football maybe I wasn't ready to I wasn't ready for that I didn't want to leave um, it was my life but being here um, like I said to you last year I want to I owe a lot to this football club for sort of giving me that love for the game back I think at the end of my time at Leicester I sort of fell out of love with it a little bit all I ever, all I wanted to do was sort of be back in that chain and be back at that and maybe because I had a couple of years where it didn't work and I had a year in Belgium which I didn't enjoy you know coming here I think with the whole family connection again it's it gave me that same feeling as I had at Leicester throughout that journey. So it's it's been amazing to be here. And obviously, like I say about signing a new contract, it was a no-brainer for me the minute it was, it was offered and I could carry on my position here as, as a player and, and then also to help him from, from the coaching side as well. It's, it's been brilliant. So, you know, I'm really grateful and, and I'm loving every minute of it. And to be honest, it's it's as good as I felt sort of mentally and physically probably the last 18 months or so in, for, for the previous five years. Um, I think you can see that with, with some of the performances at the back end of last year. Hopefully, like I say, when I've got my chances this year as well. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's good that the team's doing well. It's good the squad's doing well. But like I keep saying, I owe a lot to, to here and, and the, the contract I was given to because I, I, do, I do love the game and I love playing for, for this team at the moment. And you're going to be experienced and level-headed. How excited are you about what Bristol City could achieve this season? They showed 
on, Saturday, on Tuesday against Plymouth scoring four goals. There have been some good home performances, fantastic away performances. Um, it's early days, of course, but is the future bright for Bristol City? Yeah, I think being level-headed is, is probably the key word you've used there. Um, listen, I've been around long enough. I know where football, we, we win 4-1 and, and you're up here and you, we lose to Birmingham 2-0 when you're down here. So it is being level-headed. I think it's, we've also got to be realistic. Um, I think the future in the long term for Bristol City is, is massive. Um, I think they, they can be anything. I think as lads, we should go into a game like Leicester at the weekend and look at how that club sort of evolved and the journey they've been on to think, well, you know what, why can't that be us? You know, we've got an outstanding academy here, which is half the reason I think that, well, more than more than half the reason why this club has a, has a future in the Premier League and, and however far, because when you're creating your own players who we've looked with the likes of Scotty and Antoine, the last few winners who've sold for multi-millions of pounds, and then we've got others coming into the team who are doing just as well. You look at Belly, you look at TC when he's back, um, even young Efram now doing doing outstandingly well and, and credit to the gaffer for you know solidifying sort of the structure of the team way the wage budget everything like that bringing the young players through I think you know the real hard work is sort of being done of that now I would say if you ask we're sort of back on track um, and hopefully now the, the only way the only way is upwards as well it's, it's going to be tough at the weekend I think speaking to a lot of people I've seen Daniel Farkas comments after the Norwich game last night I think they'll be the best team in the division as you'd imagine, with, with the sort of players they've got and stuff like that. So it'll be a tough game for us, it'll be a test, but maybe a marker we can use ourselves and, and see you know, if, if, if a lot of people think they'll be champions, where can we pitch ourselves against them and, and sort of how far can we go this season. And just finally, you mentioned split loyalties in the family. Is it a case of half and half scarf this weekend <laughs> or do they back you on this occasion? Well, my family will back me, yeah, because it's me and my family support Bristol City, but for sure my, my wife's family um, will be back in Leicester 100%. My wife, I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. But, uh, yeah, there's no split loyalties in, in the family side of it, that's, that's for certain. Good stuff. Well, here's to the red half. Thank you. Cheers. Are they going to sit next to each other? Yeah, they're all sitting together, yeah. Um, they're all going to sit together. I'm sure there'll be no fighting, they'll be all right. <laughs> um, I asked sort of Nigel the question. You, you, sorry to go back to Leicester, but to, you've ex, you experienced that, and I imagine you're someone who kind of views football beyond just what transpires on the pitch in terms of the dressing room and the feel of the dressing room and the kind of characters that were in the dressing room. I just wondered if there are any parallels now at City that perhaps you started to see at Leicester before you Yeah, yeah, for football. sure. It was, um, and when I say I feel like almost like the, the, the hard work in football is never done, but when I say the bulk of the hard work in terms of trying to change your culture, create a culture, I feel like the gaffer's done a really good job in, in that sense and, and stuff like that. And we're sort of moving in that direction as to where we got to with with that at, at Leicester. Um, but listen, it's about results on the pitch. It doesn't matter what happens in the change room, how good the culture is. Yeah. If you're going out and not performing on, on the field, then then it's all irrelevant what you perform, uh, what you create in, inside the wall. So I think first and foremost, we're performing well on the pitch at the moment. I think that's, that's good to see. It's good. Everyone's enjoying their football. Um, great to see so many young lads doing well and, and stuff like that. So... That's always going to be the most important what happens at three o'clock on a Saturday. But everything which comes with that or creates that, I think the club's in a really good position with you. Um, in, t in terms of the midfield, you talked about it. Um, kind of Joe Williams has been, he, he seems to have brought a real sort of consistency to his game. Obviously, availability, he's had some availability issues. Um, I just wondered kind of like how, with your coaching role, do you kind of look at the mid? field area do you work yeah, try and, specifically in a way no or? not really specifically I try and give everyone sort of a bit of help or a bit of encouragement when they can I think with Joe like you say he's been been playing really well this season in a slightly different role maybe which probably suits him a little bit better he can use his energy and, and stuff like that and I think with him it's just about being available like you say he's, he's had a sort of tough first few years here where it's, it's not always clicked because of you know whenever he's sort of got a, a run in the team he's unfortunately been injured but it's, it's good to see him doing so well now um because obviously when we signed him, we, we knew how good a player he was. So it's great to see that and, and the combination him, Knight and, and Jamie have got at the moment is brilliant. But not just those three, think it, Belly, Naki and Sykes are the front three yeah. as well. The, the whole team, Nasi and Zach at the moment, left and right. Um, and obviously the fullback, so it's, it's going well. Um, but it's not just one area I try and focus on, no. I think it's it's a bit of everyone sometimes. It's a bit age dependent also. You know, Joe's an experienced player. Um, I'm not going to tell Jamo where he yeah. obviously from the side. Yeah, you can see where someone is easier than when you're in the the sort of um, the madhouse of the pitch. It's hard to see. You just look at the ball when you're sometimes sat on the side. You can see, 
and the, the lads have been brilliant for me to be honest they they listen to the advice they take it on board and, and stuff like that so it's good it's a real sort of two-way relationship and sometimes they come to me and say what do you think about this and, and sometimes i can go to them so it's just good to see the lads doing well and, and hopefully they can continue that this weekend and, and, and throughout the season of the leicester dressing room um i'm trying to think how many are left but obviously jamie vardy would be the obvious one um sort of how close we, we, we yeah it's hard close. because like you say you're close friends and, yeah. and stuff like that there's a lot of them still there um even young lads who sort of come through there then in the youth team so you yeah. know them you think of like Jewsbury Hall, Casey McAteer they're yeah, all there course, playing yeah. and doing well and Didi's there, Vard is there Mark. so there is a lot Ricardo um, probably more than more than 50% so I know them well I know their strengths and weaknesses so I've been trying to help sort of individuals and, and the group with that and, and what they might look to do even though the style is very different um, still some players will do certain things in certain areas which I've been trying to help with and, and yeah let's see what happens on Saturday in terms of coaching, where are you kind of? Have you done your so, license? Yeah, yeah, I've got my license. Yeah, so um, I'm actually going to apply to to try and go on the pro one, but it's a long application process, and you have to fit certain criteria and stuff. And I'm not sure I tick all the boxes with that, so I'll send my application off and and see what happens. But something I'm looking to do, but I've got my A license now, which is which is the main one. Um, and while I'm enjoying playing, I feel fit, I feel strong, I feel good, um, feel like I can still contribute. That's my main focus. I'm real conscious of, really conscious, sorry, of not going too far into the coaching yeah. side by almost sort of deselecting yourself by going that much yeah. into to that side of it. Rather than I want to be seen as a player, I want to act as a player. Um, I want to be a player. And then the other stuff, I sort of take it upon myself just to do as and when. Can you just give an insight into um, Ephraim, who's barely 17, um, you know, something like, what, two months ago, wasn't it? Like, what, what, what sort of character is he? in the dressing room was he sort of come in was he super quiet or is he no he wasn't he wasn't super quiet no I wouldn't say he was always he came in with a confidence um, obviously he knows a few of the younger lads just from academy time yeah. and that anyway but from when he first came in in pre-season he, he's been really well you can see how physically ready he is for men's football um, we like our force to be quick direct and, and he certainly ticks both of those boxes but he's got great mentality I think that's what if I look at the, the young lads who've come with us and stayed with us and done well that's me and Alex Scott Antoine gone now Tommy Conway Sam Bell um, level headed listen want to work hard and Ephraim's also got that so I think that's half the battle not just here but throughout my whole career where I've seen young lads come in and do well that's always almost probably more so vital than the, than the talent and, and Ephraim's got that about him he's willing to learn and and you know he's a loved one who looks like with, with the attributes he's got the sky could be the limit for him it's about how we nurture that and, and sort of look after him and, and help him try and guide him in the next sort of steps of his career Thanks, Andy. Cheers. Just staying with Ephraim, I uh, spoke to Cal a couple of weeks ago and he said the thing that he likes about Ephraim is he doesn't show the senior players too much respect. He's not afraid to get stuck in, is that? Yeah, that's what I mean when I say he wasn't like quiet or anything like that. He sort of comes with a confidence about him. Um, yeah, he doesn't show anyone any respect, let me say. Like, trying to stay out of the way of him if, if he starts getting involved. Um, strong boy, I think the fact he knows he has the physicality, so he knows it's one of his strengths. So if you come with the first team, you have to show everything you've got. And if, if if for him that's sort of knocking someone out of the way or, or trying to put himself about, then he, he's well within his right to do that and he does do that, which is why he stayed with the group and why the gaffers, you know, put a lot of trust in someone so young to, to come on in some important games for us. Yeah, and another, another young lad who's been in the, in the match day squad recently but hasn't got any minutes so far, Ray Nelson. I wonder if you give it a bit of an insight into what kind of player he is. He's been playing out on the right for us um, in training, but another one where I say about the mentality and, and the way he's sort of come in and fitted into the group you know, the lads have taken to him really well um, because of his mentality and, and willing to listen and he's willing to learn and then ultimately you, you're going to gain the respect of the players from doing well in training, being in good performances when you have someone on your team and say a small side of game and you win and that sort of gets people on side and, and the fact that Ray's come in and trained so well, you know, the gaffer doesn't just give out, um, you know, squad appearances and, and stuff like that. You don't just come and train with the first team because we're short on numbers. He's come in, he's done well, so he's been put in the match day squad, he's been rewarded with, with that because of his good performances. So they've both still got a long way to go in terms of fulfilling their potential for sure, but the way they listen and, and, and their athletic ability and stuff like that, they've, they've certainly got a great chance of, of being big players in, in the future. And just on Leicester Saturday, you mentioned earlier, probably the favourites for the league. Nigel, Nigel was just in here saying that it's important that you go into the game fearless and knowing that you can hurt them. Do you think? Sam Bauer, the wide players, is going to be the key to that. Obviously, they'll look to dominate. 
Yeah, I think so. Like you say, they, they have a certain way of playing. Um, I think with the manager also being at Man City last year, I think he'll be wary of us because of the performance we gave against Man City last season. He'll know some of the players. He'll know how we caused some problems in the first half. So, yeah, it's about us. It's about, like you say, any time you go up against a, a bigger team or someone who's more fancied, I think you can't show them too much respect. I think that's always something we're quite good at here. We, we sort of go after teams and stuff like that. And, and we'll, yeah, we'll have a game plan. It'll be no different on, on Saturday. And, and like I keep saying, it will hopefully work in our favour and we can sort of continue our evolution as it's going and, and, and keep trying to climb the table.